Hey guys, it's Melvin70 here, and today I'm bringing you another transfer rumour episode. I think this is episode 25. And anyway, let's get into it. So, I know it's been a few days since I've done this, so a few of these news articles you'll have heard days ago. But yeah, first one, Shakiri. A bit accepted by Stoke, and uh, that's just ridiculous. Obviously, they've still got to agree personal terms, and apparently, Inter are in negotiations with uh, Spurs for a Lamella Shakiri swap, which I think would be beneficial to Spurs, to be honest. Lamella, he does one good thing every couple of months, but then he kind of dies down. So, yeah, I think Shakiri would be a better option for them. But of course, we'll see what happens. He might not even move, but I think he will if Inter are accepting bids of 12 million. Now, this brings me on to another point. English hype is just crazy. Shakiri, 12 million. Sterling, 50 million. I'd say they're, they're equal players, kind of. Shakiri's probably proved a lot more because he's played for Bayern Munich, etc. And uh, yeah, it's just English hype. It's ridiculous. All right, so the next one is RVP, who apparently agreed terms with uh, Fenerbahce, but this has now been said by Sky Sports that they're a load of bullshit because his agent came out and said that it is a load of bullshit. Now, apparently he is set to undergo crunch talks. I think it's the Mirror who said that. Basically, this week he'll be speaking with Louis van Gaal asking if he's going to buy another striker. If he says yes, RVP wants to leave because he doesn't want to be third choice, which is fair enough. But if he says no, he's happy to play second fiddle to Wayne Rooney, who's the captain. He'll obviously start ahead of him. So the next one is again Nani. Uh, well, uh, obviously we haven't really been through this one, but yeah, he's having his medical in uh, Fenerbahce. By the time this video is out, he might even be confirmed. Now it's around six million, and the reason for that is David Moyes gave Nani a five-year deal last year. So that, well, in 2013, I think, uh, might be in earlier to, uh, 2014. But nevertheless, he had a five-year deal, and it just makes it ridiculously hard to sell him because he's getting so much m money. I think he's on, like, 100K plus a week. So we need to lower the transfer fee in order for... Besiktas, Besikta, sorry, Fenerbahce to afford the deal, so it's only around 6 million, when we could probably get about 10 if he was on a decent wage, but you know, we'll see what happens, it's a good move for Nani, we've obviously brought in Memphis Depay, who will be a replacement for a winger, so Nani's going to get even less game time, and obviously he was loaned out last season anyway to Sporting Lisbon, so yeah, good deal all round I think, for everyone involved. The next one's going to be Dragovic, He's linked to West Ham now. Earlier in January, he was linked to Manchester United. I remember that. There was heavy, heavy links, but we got no one, actually. <laughs> uh, I was just about to say we got Rojo, but that was in summer. No, we got Valdez in uh, January. But anyway, Dragovic. Haven't really seen much of him, but, you know, obviously, since we were linked, I looked a bit uh, at, like, at his highlights, etc., which doesn't tell you a lot because it's highlights. But he seems decent. He'd probably do very well for West Ham. Mid-table teams are really strengthening their squads. It's ridiculous. I mean, Paye to West Ham. Shakiri potentially to Stoke. You've got a lot of other deals that are getting done. You've got Ayu to Swansea. You know, quite high-profile names going to mid-table teams in the BPL, which is great for the Premier League, and it makes that competition just a little bit tougher. So the next one is going to be Andervile to Spurs. Now, this has hit a little bit of a nick because Southampton are considering pushing legal charges because apparently there was a release clause in Andervile's contract. Well, I think it was a 6.8 million one and they did, um, Atletico Madrid didn't stop it in time. I don't know, it's complicated, but basically they didn't stop it in time. So that entitles Southampton to pay 6.8 million and they'll get his transfer regardless. And if Atletico Madrid don't let them, they're considering taking legal action. So he's probably going to stay at Southampton. I mean, unless somehow these this legal action can be stopped or... Uh, Atletico Madrid can win, then maybe Spurs will have a chance. I thought he was all done to Spurs, but I did think it was a bit weird how Southampton didn't actually offer for him, and uh, this is why, because they can get him for 6.8 million, which I'm sure they'll do, and that's a fantastic signing for either one of these teams, probably Southampton at this uh, point in time, though. Next one is going to be uh, Wayne Aldum. Is it Wayne Aldum? I, I can't pronounce this guy's name. So many people in comments when I use him in squad builders, etc. Keep telling me how to pronounce it. I think it's Wayne I'm probably wrong, but anyway, he's linked to Sunderland, he's linked to Newcastle, he's linked to Zenit, and he's linked to Roma. His agent, I think it's the agent, no, it's Sky Sources actually. So Sky Sources have said that Newcastle haven't 
even inquired or anything. Uh, they haven't said anything about Sunderland. They said Roma, again, haven't made an official bid or whatever, and Zenit have made an official bid. So we'll see what happens with this one. I could see him coming to Sunderland or Newcastle. He'd be a fantastic signing, again, showing that mid-table teams are trying to push on, and this would be a fantastic signing for one of them. I think PSV are looking in the region of 15 million. I think he's their captain. Obviously, we took Memphis to Pi, and uh, we paid 20, well, it's roughly 21 million with, uh, I think, 4 million add ons, something like that. So, uh, yeah, Wayne Alden would be another good signing for another club in the BPL or Zenit or Roma. Let me know where you think he's going to go. And now the next three are just recaps, basically, like new informations came alight. And the first one is Ramos. Now, He's quoted as saying he's not negotiating with anyone. This doesn't mean anything. Ramos himself isn't negotiating with anyone. Doesn't mean the clubs aren't negotiating for Ramos. Now, this also means that he's not negotiating with Real Madrid for a new contract. He's not spoken to Real Madrid about a contract. Well, he's probably spoken, but negotiations aren't underway. And he also hasn't spoken to Manchester United about a contract or any other club. So, yeah, the media are obviously, you know, going crazy with this one. And Sky Sports really have to kind of protect themselves because they've been pushing this Ramos story. I know they didn't say it was 100%, but they were the ones that said, you know, we've tabled a 28.6 million bid, etc. So they're really pushing it. So now they've got to be careful because these reports have came to light. Well, he was interviewed, so it's the truth. Also, Ronaldo was uh, questioned whether Ramos was joining Manchester United, and all he said is, I don't know. Literally, he looked a bit annoyed, so maybe, you know, some negotiations are underway. Um, I believe there are. I think his agent, uh, his brother, Rene, is really pushing for this deal, because I think Sergio Ramos doesn't want to disrespect the Real Madrid fans, but... There was also another report that said when the time is right, he will publicly announce that he wants to leave Real Madrid. I do believe that if he does stay at Real Madrid, he won't sign a new contract extension or he'll move to Manchester United. I can't see him staying at Madrid and signing a contract extension, um, but we'll see what happens, of course. That doesn't mean that I think he'll come to Manchester United 100%. He might stay at Real Madrid and just not extend his contract. We'll see what happens. Tied into that, we've got David De Gea, who was questioned today about Real Madrid, and he said, Real Madrid, I've, I've got a report to uh, pre-season with Manchester United. Now, People are kind of getting the wrong end of the stick, thinking that he, he really is reluctantly coming now uh, back to Manchester, which may be true, but I think they're reading in too much in between the lines. I think he is going to go, all right, but that depends on Real Madrid because they are pissing around. And uh, Ed Woodward, our chief executive, is really, really doing well with these. He's playing hardball with Real Madrid. He's not letting them get the upper hand in these negotiations, basically saying, you want De Gea, we'll take Ramos, or you can wait a year for De Gea. And then also maybe within that year, I'm not saying he will, but maybe if we do well, we bring in a couple of high-profile names, he might sign, all right? He might sign a contract during that year. So I think it's well worth the risk of keeping him for a year. You know, even if there's a potential to let him go for free, even a pre-contract in January and let him go for free in the summer, because it'll give a small chance that he will sign a contract, but we'll see what happens. I still think he'll go to Real Madrid, which is uh, pretty annoying. But the next one, we've got Harry Kane. Now, again, Sky Sources have been absolutely shit this year. They were the ones that said Manchester United are interested in Harry Kane. All right, and I went, well, we're probably not, to be honest. We've probably got slight interest when monitoring him, but there's no way we're going to bid. And what do you know? After today, no official bid or contact for Harry Kane. Sky sources understand. They were the one who said it, and now they're going back on it. it. It's just ridiculous, man. I don't think we really were considering a massive bid for Harry Kane, especially since Spurs have Daniel Levy in charge. He's only had one year. I think we're not prepared to risk, especially since what's happened in the last couple of years. 60 million for Di Maria. He was proven everywhere and obviously he hasn't had the best season. So we're a bit sceptical with uh, players, especially up and coming ones, I think. So although we've got a lot of money and undoubtedly we will overspend for a few players, but I think this time we're trying to be a lot more conservative with the money. We're trying to get better deals for our club. And uh, I think Di Maria will come good, but I think we'll wait a year before we make a proper bid for Kane, if we're even interested, but we'll see, because Hernandez is now injured, it looks as though we're selling Angelo, uh, is, is it Angelo Enriquez to Z uh, oh, Zagreb, uh, Dynamo Zagreb, I think, I can't even, uh, honestly, I'm butchering these names, but anyway, RVP might be out, even though his agent, obviously, he's got all those 
meetings, whatever, we'll find out. He might be out, though. Um, obviously, we've got rid of Falcao. We didn't extend his loan. So we've really only got Rooney to start the season because Wilson might be loaned out to Hull City. We'll see what happens there. So we will prob well, almost definitely have to get a striker, especially if we're left with Rooney and everyone else is either gone, loaned, or not extended. You know, We'll see what happens. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts on this are. Thanks for the support, as always. Sorry there was no video yesterday. I was at my uh, year 13 prom for sixth form, so uh, yeah, I just didn't have time. So again, I apologize, but hopefully you have enjoyed, and yeah, peace.